Hey, I'm Emma Garlett, and on today's episode of Paint It Black, I'll be talking about the devastating floods which has hit the Kimberley and how it's affected First Nations people. I'll also be explaining what steps a government should take to ensure the flood recovery includes and helps First Nations communities in the region. Join me as I paint it black. So the state government has declared an emergency flood situation in the Kimberley. This declaration applies to the Shire of Broome and Derby West Kimberley. This is a force of nature that has devastated the Kimberley region, as a community struggles against flooding, which has been described as once in a century. The new year brought with it ex-tropical cyclone Ellie and a surge of water that left remote towns underwater, saw dozens of people evacuated and leaving a mammoth cleanup. The expanse of the flooding has left the region looking like an inland sea. Fitzroy Crossing was the worst hit, with the river reaching a peak of 15.8 metres, destroying roads, bridges and inundating the homes and surrounding communities. The town's bridge, a key transport link, was destroyed, the impact of which is catastrophic due to limitations on food supply routes and road access. The trucks will have to go through South Australia to get uh, north through Horse Creek and those sort of places if they're coming from Perth. A temporary bridge was put in place to allow important movement between the north and south of the state. But now there's another setback. The flood zone is running out of gas. In less than a week, the town's natural gas will run out, meaning the power will be cut and the flood affected communities will be left with no electricity on top of the devastation to their homes and town. Diesel generators are being urgently trucked to Fitzroy Crossing from Derby in a mammoth operation to keep the lights on. The state's beef industry has been hit hard, with beef now being imported from over east while the cleanup begins. But apart from our ability to buy local beef, there's another devastating impact these floods have had, and that's on our First Nations people. Many Indigenous communities have been displaced, their homes, families and livelihoods have been severely impacted, especially along the Matawara. It's one of the largest rivers in Australia. Its banks are home to countless First Nations people and it has spiritual significance as the traditional owners believe the Matawara is an ancestral being for all traditional owner groups who belong to the river and its systems. At the start of this video, I mentioned this weather event has been described as a once in a hundred year flood. While this may be the case, when you look at what is happening around us, Australia has been facing more than its fair share of floods over these past few years. The reality is that the flooding is partly due to the climate crisis we find ourselves in. We saw Brisbane go underwater early last year with the Queensland floods, and it wasn't too long ago that Calberry felt the wrath of Cyclone Saroja. Now, New South Wales is currently facing its own flooding crisis, and we are facing a similar situation in the Kimberley. It's a lot of land and it's a lot of water. The Kimberley is covered and we have a long road ahead of us. It is going to take years for any normality to resume. And what we have historically known as normal may not be the case in the future. It seems predicting future weather patterns from past historical data is redundant. Seeing your home and livelihood ruined is devastating and the state and federal governments need to act fast and make some big calls. So what now? The remnants of ex-tropical cyclone Ellie have been felt, but the full extent of the damage is yet to be realised. The past two weeks have seen government, non-profits, local businesses, residents, Indigenous groups and pastoralists come together. However, some of the most impacted and vulnerable people from the floods are our Aboriginal people who live in the communities along the Matawara Fitzroy River. Many of our Indigenous communities have been disproportionately affected by the floods, as the communities which run along the river are now underwater. One of the biggest issues from the flooding is the housing crisis. There is an impending housing crisis for many Aboriginal people. Many community members are displaced from their homes. This could last for months or years, depending on the rebuild efforts and wet season impacts. With this being the case, the evacuation centres may become more permanent and they will need to be fit for purpose with toilets, kitchens and air conditioning to house large numbers of people for longer than anticipated. Federal Minister for Resources and Minister for Northern Australia, Madeline King, has committed to including our First Nations people in the Kimberley flood rebuild. This is a critical step to ensure Indigenous communities are included in both the crisis response and its longer term phase in which roads and infrastructure are rebuilt and industry is restarted on traditional owner land. There have been a lot of resources sent to help. 
The Australian Defence Force has been deployed to the Kimberley and they are in Fitzroy Crossing to help with general duties to assist with the flood recovery. And there are mobilised Australian Army helicopters on the ground which have been sent from Queensland. Emergency Services Minister Stephen Dawson said the government was looking at enlisting the US Army to help repair or replace the Fitzroy River Bridge. In principle, this may be OK, but how long will it take to get their boots on the ground and start work? We don't have months to sit pretty and wait for the US troops to be our knight in shining armour. We need to act now. But the reality is that it's unlikely that repairs will start until after the wet season. We can see the damage. Roads have been destroyed, bridges have collapsed and houses are underwater. With no access in and out of many of the towns up north, prices will go up for food, drinking water and essentials. And considering there is another two months of wet season, there's a risk of more flooding. The government needs to intervene and take a community-centric approach, focusing on housing for Indigenous communities as a priority. As the floodwaters slowly recede, this is a time for care, compassion and immediate action. Thanks for watching Paint It Black with me, Emma Garlett. Don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode.